I am first ladies in Hunza business starting this why you starting business you are women I am not listen to another people I'm working starting. Welcome to Chopstick Travel. We're Luke and Sabrina, and today is day two here in the beautiful Hunza Valley, northern Pakistan. This is seriously one of the most gorgeous areas we have ever visited. And in today's episode, we're going to be exploring Hunza Valley, taking in all the views, and tasting some local cuisine. And this morning, we're just at the beautiful Serena Altit residence. We've got this incredible view behind us of the Hunza Valley. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned. Until the end, let's go eat some Pakistani food. So we are staying at the Serena Altit residence. It's a brand new hotel that's just opened about a month ago. It's October 2021 now. And their breakfast area has got the most stunning view. It's literally breathtaking. It's called the Kabesi Cafe. So we're gonna order up some breakfast and take in the views. What a way to start the day. So we've ordered some fresh local apple juice and mm -hmm. apples are really famous in this area and I think it's like apple season now so yeah. it should be really good. Let's try it. Oh, oh god. Yes. That's so good. Wow. So we've got our breakfast and we've got a nice omelet here and then this is something really local to Gilgit Baltistan it's called Giling and it's like a pancake and then we've got uh, some butter and honey so I'll grab a little bit of butter put it on my pancake here load it up and then grab some of that honey as well which I'm sure is just a local organic honey light breakfast today but it looks really tasty freshly made Mmm. Mmm. So it's super saturated with the butter, nice and sweet from the honey, and the flavor is really fruity, and it's because it's been fried in apricot oil. So it's got this really unique fruity flavor. Yum. Chase it down with some chai. Oh yeah. So we've got an omelet, it's got, looks like tomatoes, green onions, and there should be cheese in there as well. Mmm. A little crispy on the other side, super fluffy. This is gonna be a good way to start the day. Yum. Finished off with breakfast and wow, what a magical view this is. You can just sit there for hours watching the clouds roll over the mountaintops and seeing the uh, locals working in their gardens. We are just hiking up to the Altit Fort which is kind of like attached to the Serena Altit residences. Nice view. We want professionals here. Whoa. Wow. Wow. So we've come to the top of the Altid Fort. This fort is around 1100 years old. We're getting a tour around and the views, of course, I keep saying that, are just incredible. You can see the brilliant blue river and you've got all this old wood and stone construction. So the top level is mainly for the royal family. And actually this little room behind me was a hammam. I'm standing in the bathroom right here. So this little thing in the ground was the toilet. And then look at the view that you've got with the toilet. So 
So we are on the roof right now. You can see the uh, watchtower, which was an observation post so they could see uh, invaders coming. And this was actually built by um, Tibetans. So that's a little monastery right there on the side. And then there's a little storage area for dried fruits and stuff. Really interesting uh, structure. Worth it for sure to come check this out when you're in Hunza. At almost 300 meters at the top of Altit Fort, those in the past who got the death penalty were just tossed right off the edge here. <laughs> to 300 meters below. You stand there. You stand here, sir. Okay. So we're just finishing off at the Altit Fort. This is such a cool place. I loved that tour and the details in the fort are so well preserved. It's literally like walking through a museum and we had the entire place to ourselves. Just absolutely wonderful. We're gonna go grab some lunch now. So for lunch today, we've come to a very special little kind of street food stall here in Karimabad Hunza. It's called Hunza Food Pavilion, and it's run by a woman named Lal Shazadi. So owned by women, and uh, the women are cooking here, and they serve a couple of traditional dishes. One that I know we're gonna try is chapshuro, but uh, yeah, we're gonna order some up. I'm really excited. Everyone's so friendly here. Uh, let's go see how they cook the food. So how, how long have you had this restaurant? It's around 10 years. How many? 10 years. 10 years, yeah, 10 yeah. years, oh, okay. 10 years. So you yeah. always live in Hunza? Yeah, I live in Hunza. Okay. I all things are making organic. I'm making chapshiro. Okay. Yes. Okay, for you. I'm cooking all night and if you got I. You this cook the chapshiro with the. Chapshiro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oil? Local yeah. yeah, all night and if you got I. <laughs> Hanas like my food. Uh, some people not like spicy. When I said inside you like spicy, not me. People say little spicy. Some people like little spicy. Yeah. Green chili inside using, not red chili. Next, red chili is not good for health. Green chili is not problem for health. Okay. Yeah. But inside material organic, I am agriculture training with train in Japan. All materials are training, organic training with Japan. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay. I am a select in agriculture with JICA. I am going to Japan. No my money, uh, but uh, agriculture department and local sport organization, LSOs. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Did you like Japan? Yeah, Japanese people hard working. Yeah. Uh, time management, only time management, very good in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah time management. Yeah. We are Pakistani, our time management not good. <laughs> time management not good in Japan. People time money, train time. Yeah. And working time, eating time, yeah. sleeping time. <laughs> Everything is time. So this one is what? A chapshiro. Inside a coriander. Mint, onion, green chili, zafran, and uh, garlic, uh, or uh, mint, uh, and the cooking walnut and apricot oil. Wow. Mm. So what is the meat? Meat, local chicken inside. Chicken. Okay. Chicken, yeah. Sometimes I making in the uh, yard meat. Sometimes um, uh, mutton, mm -hmm. or sometimes local chicken. Mm. I said no. Because it's not enough, I'm making everything fresh. When no enough, I'm making again for you. When less, not good. Yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah, you know, when the first time I am first ladies in Hunza, business starting this woman, business starting. This time many women um, working starting, but well, I am first ladies. First and yeah, this time said, why you starting business? You are a woman. No parda, you understand parda. This is no parda, males 
friends are making you mm -hmm. why you they people uh, disturb me first when i am starting business people many people disturb me i am not listen to another people i am working starting yeah. This time I am not famous in Pakistan. I am well famous. How ambassadors came here? They like my food. Yeah. yeah. So now you are very successful. Yeah, yeah. And before people disturb me, why you starting this business? Why you are woman? I am first ladies in Honda, and this uh, hotling starting business. Beta apne laaye the chote the. Ab kab aaye the? Kisne saaye the na? Yeah, isse pehle. Yeah, aaki mein bas abhi July mein to mushahe ho jaye aapke. क्या जुलाई को कहाँ गई थी बेटा मैं जुलाई को तो थी खाया था बेटा और दो दो क्या थे कोल्ड ड्रिंक कहाँ से लाई से बीस हाल चौम फाइव फिफ्टी सेवन फिफ्टी हो गई बात बाजी so we were just meeting and speaking with uh, the owner Lal Shizadi. She was telling us about how she was the first woman to start a business here in Hunza to start a restaurant and she had a lot of uh, trouble at the beginning. People would come here and say that you can't do this because you're a woman and she she just kept uh, working and now her restaurant is very successful and a lot of people say it's the best food in all of Hunza. So she's got a little area of seating inside with maybe eight seats and then on the outside she's just added this extension with tons more seating and uh, she's making the chef shuro which is two pieces of a uh, flattened dough which she makes at lightning speed with a crazy technique with the rolling pin super fast so she flattens out two pieces of dough and then fills it with a mixture this time with uh, chicken but you can get it with uh, yak meat and also mutton and there's tons of different spices in there and then she pinches it in a really unique way all the way around and then fries it on the frying pan and she actually uses organically made by herself almond and uh, apricot oil and she pours a little bit of extra oil on top fries it on both sides and it comes out golden crispy and we're also getting a cheese chapati but such an amazing story really heartwarming to hear that uh, she was able to successfully open this restaurant and uh, thrive and she was also telling us about how she traveled to Japan to learn about organic growing of vegetables and making the organic oils and now she's training the people in the village so it's quite an amazing story from such a humble background I'm making Bruce paneer and with inside some materials inside oh. Paneer. This, this is, is paneer. cheese. That's paneer. Inside coriander, mint, onion, green chili, and a mixture inside. How much is it? Is it halal or no? This is not halal. This is my own recipe. So the cheese chapati is not a simple uh, cheese and chapati. It's got a lot of different ingredients in there. So she crushed up some fresh walnuts and she's got some crushed apricot seeds. And then she mixed it with the paneer cheese and a little mixture of uh, some green chilies, coriander and some spices. And then she's gonna put that in between the two chapatis and fry it up. Wow, that sounds really, really good. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Oh, okay. When this pan is soft. Okay, oh, make okay. it soft. Makes it soft, yeah. So that's not crispy. Or mm -hmm. <clears throat> This is organic, not on. <laughs> so we're sitting down now outside. We've got the cheese chapati, which has this incredible mixture. She served us some on the side. That's the all those uh, apricot seeds ground up with the walnuts and some uh, coriander spices. And then it's all in paneer cheese, cottage cheese. And then this is the really famous dish here in Hunza, the champshuro, which is stuffed with a mixture of chicken. And just check out the, the outdoor setting here. It's absolutely beautiful. My mouth is watering. Let's dig in. So you can see that it's quite oily on the outside, but you don't have to worry about this being unhealthy because it's all organic and you can smell that apricot oil. It's really like fruity. 
Oh man. Wow. So the chapatis are not crispy. They're actually really soft because you kind of steam them for a minute at the end. And then you get that nice tangy paneer on the inside and it's really strong with the apricot oil, which reminds me of like a like an almond milk or something. It's got a fruitiness to it. Yeah. Mm. Oh man, that's awesome. Okay, moving on to the chapsuro and you can see this nice kind of uh, woven design on the outside and this one's stuffed with uh, local chicken, all kinds of spices, mint in there and she served us some of this uh, veneer on the side so you can kind of go for a little dip. Let's try it out, this is gonna be great. Mm. Mm. That is bursting with flavor. The chicken is really good and you can taste quite a bit of cumin in there with some fresh mint and it's a thicker dough on the outside than the chapati for sure. Whew, it's got a little bit of a spice to it, but she said it's got green chilies in it and not red chilies because the green chilies are good for you. Red chilies are not so good for you apparently. So she's really thinking of your health and caring for you, which is amazing. So Lal Shazadi herself brought us out a nice bowl of some almonds, there's dried apricots. I see some of the, the uh, apricot seeds there. And this is something that uh, traditionally they'll do here in the north when a guest is visiting their home. And she's just been so friendly to us. And I wanna say one thing, if you guys are planning to come here, you have to eat all of the food. So don't order too much. You can order more after if you're still hungry, but you have to eat all the food. It's all organic, so much love into the food, so much care, and uh, what an experience. It's all so delicious. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, welcome, welcome. So See nice you to next meet you. time. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I just wanna say a quick thank you to Manaki, manaki.com. They are the ultimate travel resource for Pakistan, a one-stop shop for all your travel related needs. And if you're planning a trip to Pakistan, you need to check out manaki.com. They arranged an incredible tour of Northern Pakistan for us. And this is a two-part episode, but I wanted to keep them separate. So the second half of this day, we were invited to a Northern Pakistani wedding where we got to experience seeing the traditions and cultures of a Pakistani wedding and tasting some incredible food. I wanted to keep it separate because Lal Shazadi deserves her own episode. It is such a heartwarming story to see the first woman uh, run business in Hunza and she's serving what I believe is the best food in Hunza. So make sure to go check out her shop when you visit. And I want to say a thank you to you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon and the like button and we'll see you guys on the next episode.